But um, so let's start. How how do you feel your story you're telling in your film is is it a contemporary lesbian story like conflicts that lesbian uh, characters have to deal with also in in reality? Can you say so, or could you say so? A, I think it's more about a, a marriage. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think we're getting to this point where we're. We're sort of 20 years into the future, and we're, we're not needing to tell stories about our relationships and right to have them. We're sort of interested in telling stories about where we are now. And so I think concussion is pretty much about a 20-year marriage and what happens sort of when the love dies in that marriage. And, uh, and Robin's character goes through some extreme measures. To deal with that. To deal yeah. with that, yeah. And the fact is that, that any committed relationship uh, is there's there's probably some point down the road where you know one person's libido is higher than the other or one person's needs are, are greater than the other and um, that person will experience a sort of sexual abandonment by their partner because they can't be met there and the question then sort of for everyone I think is what what then do you do and there's obviously what what a traditional marriage model would, would offer which is that you stick to it and figure it out no matter what but But uh, I think people are taking a more creative approach, generally, straight and gay, to marriage, um, and uh, how to make marriages work and succeed in the long haul is an ongoing question for everyone uh, these days. So I right. Think, so yeah. it sort of crosses over to into the mainstream. Into a the bit yeah. More. So. And is that a conflict? Is that a problem that these relationships kind of go over into the mainstream now and might conform with this, you know, in the end heteronormative lifestyle maybe, and that well, we lose our queer. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, just to, to, to speak about heteronormativity in the context of marriage, because a huge part of the gay movement has been a f uh, to, f to fight to get the privilege to be married, right? That's been, that's been a, at least a focal point um, to, to gain equality on those grounds. But marriage is hard, <laughs> you know? Marriage, been there, and mar been there, marriage, yeah, marriage yeah. is hard, and marriage, um, to some, can feel like a form of imprisonment. And so... It's interesting to speak about it as something that everybody's fighting for as a, as a sign of freedom and equality and to, and to speak about it truthfully as what it is, which is hard work. Um, yeah, hard work to be committed and to stay committed to a single person, I think, for almost everyone. So, right, I mean, I don't think yeah. that the film is begging the question um, a, a, about, you know, our right, our right to have rights. Yeah, it, 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 it takes that as a given. It's a given. It, it's well, a given. I don't yeah. know that it's necessarily given. I just don't know if it's... Not in these people's lives. No, but in these people's lives, it's a given. Right. Yeah. It, well, I think that they've found a way to find, um, find a certain way to deal with each of those issues. And now it's led them to this issue. And interestingly enough, this is really one of the issues that even draws you to... Gay, being gay or being lesbian in the first place, it's your right to have the sex that you want to have. And yet there's no sex being had. And so all of these other issues have really, you know, taken up the bulk of their time. And, you know, they say that married couples fight about three things. It's sex, money, and what's the third thing? It must be kids. But um, religion, family, politics. religion, I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe that's all said and done. But, um... I think it's um, it's interesting because when you when you get into these types of marriage arrangements, the love dies no matter who you are. And because you because you're so taken over by by routine, by daily life, by structuring, yeah. organizing. Well, it can it can. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's. I I think you have to go into a, a long-term contract knowing that this will be a huge challenge. And there are people, I mean, I know older married couples who have found their way through, but there's always going to be at least one difficult passage where it feels impossible. Uh, and, um, you know, and almost always in relationships there's a, there's a great imbalance between the two people on some essential level where their needs cannot possibly met, be met by the one person. I don't know that we're built to have our needs met entirely by one person, but, this, but the, the myth of marriage is that they will be taken care of by the one person. And so there's a period of disappointment with the fact that that's not the case, and then, the, you know, it's all those, those stages. Um, oh, you bring up an important point about yeah. finding your way through, though. I mean, this yeah. is also very much about a midlife crisis as well. So, so where, you know, maybe if they waited a few years, they would have found their way through. But I think, that it, I think something comes to a, a head for this character.
Yeah. So how did you, I'm very interested in how you practically approached your character. You know, I don't, when did you really start thinking about the development and how you as an actress, you know, kind there of were certain, play that There were role. certain things I knew would be essential that I had to give to her. And mm -hmm. then I wanted to see... Giving meaning you had to... I had to give from myself to the character. I had to give to the character to make the character possible. Right. There were certain things right. I had to give to her. I had to give to her my hunger, my need, my what, whatever I might carry around as a human being, right. I had to right. hand to this character. But it was, it was in a form of, and see what happens if I do. I didn't have a clear roadmap of what this experience would be like, and I wanted it to be an experience. So I knew I needed to be courageous enough to give that part of myself to this character, and I, and I knew at least my own sense of her, I knew I had to put myself through certain physical paces to um, bring my, I guess I would say, body but also psyche into alignment with hers. And so I went, I went on a kind of uh, physical regimen uh, for about three months leading up to doing uh, the part, believing that the character uh, was coming from a slightly different place that way. I'm very, I'm very easy with myself in my real life, and I thought she would be very strict with herself because she's trying to stay very much under control. Yes. And so I, I developed a s certain set of strictures that I was very adhered to, and I was very religious about them for the period of time of the shooting and up to the shooting, because there's a kind of a mindset that that seems to go along with. When I've met people who do that to themselves, they're holding something down very tightly. Mm -hmm. And if they can have control over the what they do in their day, their exercise, their diet, they feel like they've got it mastery. Together. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and I felt like that was her starting place very much in the story. And how far did Stacy's skills as a director support that too? How was the, the, we the collaboration? We, we just developed a way um, that, that at times felt jazz-like, you know what I mean? And just a way mm. of finding things that, um, because she had a version of the character in her and I started to have a version of the character in me and the character became the meeting place of those two understandings. And so we had to a, listen and respond to what each other was bringing. And I don't think the character would have been the same with, without all the things Stacy brought. And I don't think that the character she conceived was quite what I, you know. So it was a marriage of our two points of view that made the character what it is, I think. So, which is interesting because the character goes through two stages, two distinct stages and some stages in between where she's in lockdown and where she starts to be freed up. And um, so uh, Stacy had a much clearer vision of, of what the parameters of what she would allow herself were in the first half of the journey. And I think I opened up territory for Stacy in the second half of the journey. So that, that's where I think we... we the sex part. <laughs> the, but yeah, the, the sex was all, was all me. No, it was I, all you. Was it wasn't authentic, all me. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. But, um, I just, I just stayed at the monitor like this. <gasps> yeah. I was like, I was like oh, at the monitor. Yeah, exactly. No, it's not, not quite like, that. And <laughs> there we go. There but is it also? I was wondering. I don't know if, if that's maybe a little bit reducing the film. But is it, is it also American in a way? Can you call it American? What? Say about American. Is what? it is it is it American? Like a certain American gay lesbian culture? Huh. That's You're showing. Interesting. I don't know question. that I, I know any other gay and lesbian culture, but the American. What what, what gay I would say about culture. being American. What would you say about? It? Well, <laughs> America is is in a version of a kind of an adolescence, generally speaking, to do with sexuality yes. across the board, and and it's even to do it's it's to do as much with what straight people will allow straight people to do, as it is with what is permitted for gay people to express and be. It's it's. It's a complete re-understanding. I think the culture is in a... Whereas I feel here, Germany, um, that happened a while before, ago. And, and the rules, I, my understanding of, you know, it, the, that the rules are, are looser over here? Here, actually, than they are there in general. It's um, so interesting because also. But your perspective is, yeah. is more valuable. Yeah. I mean, I, I, now yeah. I live in the States, but I was born and raised in Germany. But then I also know that in Germany, we import so much from the states, you know, starting with sure. the with this freedom struggle, the, the 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 civil rights movement, the gay and lesbian movement, and everything is so it is it is so it's so complex. It's so difficult to say, and America is so complex too. 
Of course. I feel. Yeah, I don't but, mean to generalize about yeah, uh, and about it's, either it's culture, a, but we have we have a different relationship to religion as a nation. I yes, think. that is and true. That's that what, is very and true. that's what that's what I'm true. talking about. If you look at the whole country, obviously, yeah. But, yeah. living on in New York and LA primarily, as I have mm. done, I've lived in a very sort of liberal version of America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you look at America as a whole, it's very informed by. Christianity, and um, and I and and that's the piece that I think in Germany, it's more of an agnostic culture. It now. is very secular, very very yeah, secular. And, and that makes a difference in terms of there being these hard and fast rules about behavior and codes of ethics in terms of in terms of uh, sexual relationships and marriage and all of this. That's true. Um, but then I was yeah. thinking because when 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 Obama got reelected and he was get, he was delivering his uh, speech. And mentioning the rights of gay and lesbian, you know, and, and this that's revolutionary thing. in America. And then I was yeah. like, "Well, this would never happen in in, in Germany. Like the cha our chancellor, she would just never mention the rights of gays and lesbians in her acceptance but speech." But it's the big civil rights movement of our era. Probably that's in it, America. and that's a difference. I realize it's a like, it has a different status because there is such a force holding it down that there needs to be an equal and opposite force pushing it up. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's not as oppressed a class to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the sort of the voice, uh, it, it, is, it's, it, it has a different status in society. I mean, there are still parts of, parts of America where uh, you'd, you'd be hugely ostracized for being gay, and those people just migrate <laughs> to the coast. To the, to the, to the urban, <laughs> um, yeah, to the coast, to either know, one of them. Yeah, yeah, to the yeah. So it's almost as if we have two Americas, because there are places Very you can much. live where it's no thing, and the way Stacy lives, it's no thing. I mean, it doesn't seem like in Montclair, New Jersey, where, where I saw her life. It just, it, it just felt like couples lived alongside other couples, and they could be gay, and they could be straight, and there was mm. absolutely no difference, really. no difference. It seems yeah. that way, looking at it. I don't know what your experience is, but... I, I, do, I think that it's... I think we're roundabouting the same thing. We're, yeah. I think it's very universal. I think there are two... I think there are two Germanys, I think there are two Americas, I Maybe think there are two yeah. everywhere. Yes, and yeah. very much. Very you either much. buy it or you don't. Yes. yes. Yeah. And um, I, I think that we're just getting to this point where we just sort of want to get on with it and live our lives, and now this is 20 years later, you know, yeah. in, a, yeah. in a way. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, after a while you just kind of, and this is what cinema's doing, this is what movies are doing, after a while you just get sick of the of the of the the general conversation about it and you want to get a little bit more specific mm -hmm. as to mm -hmm. sort of how you feel and tell a little bit more of a personal story so um, I think that's what I tried to do just we t you know we tried to tell yeah. just a very personal as opposed to something story. that stands for something yeah that has a cause yeah. behind yeah. it or any of that yeah. it's not like that as a movie at all yeah. no it's not I mean it really is a character piece you know and I think Ro Robin really embodies that character in so many ways um, and showed me a way in so many ways, you know? As she said, there were, there were times where it was very hard and fast about the rules of, of what this woman was and how she punished herself. Um, and yet when we got into this loft environment that you see as she starts to see her clients, um, she, she sort of starts to come alive one by one by one by one. And in many ways, she sees um, these people, they become, as you said, they come, become refractions of who she is. They develop her character. And I think it's really just looking valuably into a character, you know? and seeing her and the way she feels, seeing how her friends respond to her. Even if it's no thing, her friends still ostracize her in a way. You know what I mean? As, as friends do. As friends and, yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, as friends do. Yeah. But she's still an other in that. Can you maybe talk a little bit about the need for those stories you're, you're telling? You know, like, why, why do we need this character, more specific individual? representations now as opposed to those general That's political. That's a very good question. I think the, the um, nature of movies now um, are very formulaic and I think people are looking for people to sort of break, break rules and I think one of the ways to do that is to be insistent upon character mm -hmm. and to be, um, I, think, I think what the script really was, was it was insistent upon development of this one character. Who is she? 
how can we see her in different lights and at light and I, I I think that one of the reasons why people are responding so well to this piece is that we're able to finally look at who this character is at 42 years old and see her in so many different ways and we like to keep watching her principally because of Robin's performance but also because we just are fascinated by who she is and well, I think that's where we're going yeah and, you know? I th and I think what's cool about this this piece is that scene by scene by scene by scene she can be radically different um, within a short frame of time as people are uh, as people are and very few things allow you the luxury of that because your character is threaded along a storyline that demands that you execute this series of beats to tell the story right and because we can linger with her in her evolution mm -hmm. as, a, as a person she can she can in one scene be very delicate another be very uh, fierce and another you know and 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 it doesn't it doesn't say like that one doesn't break the image of who this because they contradict it doesn't break the image of who you know this person to be because you're tracking her so closely yeah my mom had um, the best quote yeah, of it yeah my mom said that sometimes we can be heroes and sometimes we can be villains and sometimes we can be both you know and think we're both at the same time mm -hmm. and I think that is absolutely Abby mm -hmm. what, what were the reactions of the audience here in Berlin how did they receive the film well, what we haven't, did they we haven't screened yeah. yeah it's our first screening yeah, yeah. so, so they, they were actually let's think about it for tomorrow because this will be it was great <laughs> period <laughs> yeah they had a standing ovation for Robin and then Robin spoke German and talked about her um, <laughs> father and then and you I already just found did a little jig because we got 17 Germany. buyers in the right, right? Yeah, yeah. That was so good. <laughs> and then I got drunk yeah. with um, Mr. Speck and um, what else happened? Yeah. Well, there's some, thing, there's some unmentionables. That oh, right, right, yes. right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Oh, leave. I have your unmentionables. <laughs> I'll return them to We're you. We're going to leave it to the imagination of our audience. Yeah, yeah. If only we could write the future. But yes, no, it's, it was very interesting. Sundance we've, we have behind us, and that went very well. So. How, how was it in the States? How did, how did people react to it? It was kind of thrilling. I, 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 didn't, I didn't at all uh, under, expect or understand that people would identify as strongly with the, with the film. I crossed the spectrum as they did, um, because the story, uh, as summarized in its sort of tagline, sounds like you're going to be way, way off you know, in some land that nobody's explored before, but actually people had many, many points of identification with uh, the story and the character, and that, that's the part that I was most excited by. I, I was really, you know. Um, I know, that one guy yeah. who came up to me at Sundance and gave me a big hug, and he's like, it's resonating with me like a mofo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. That's great. I was like, dude. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Wait. But do you think it's going to be easier for us to p produce such films in the future to get, you know, financing is always a big question. The topic, you know, the queer, gay, lesbian topics are always ostracized, kind well, of, is it? Well, as, yeah. as the two things, I mean, as it starts to be less, I happen to think that it, it's, it's really an interesting place to talk from, where you're talking about two people who have no inherent difference two men or two women have no inherent difference. So if they run into some difficulty, you're talking about two human beings who have run into difficulty and you can't, you can't attach the right. normal gendered gender stereotypes thing, right. of like, well, all men are this way and all women are that way, so therefore, and it's a very you just interesting have to live way with the problem. to talk to couples because, yeah. because they have to look at it as a human predicament, what the two people are. And so I actually yeah. think this you know, could happen many times over. Um, these kind of stories and be very interesting to people. Great, thank you for telling yeah. your story and I hope it's going to be an inspiration for many others to tell, thank you. to come and I hope you'll enjoy your great night tonight. What a nice interview, thank yes, you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah.